They called him the Diesel. Drink up that Diesel. Oh, 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 oh. He leaned across the table and he goes, you need to get me back there. I'll make you famous. And to Riggins, good hold. He's got the first down to the 40. He's gone. The 35, the 30, the 20. He's gone. He's gone. It's Rico the Diesel. Hello and welcome to the 39th episode. Did I get that one right? right, Todd? Ding, ding. Well huh? All right. 39th episode of Riggo the Diesel. I'm John Riggins. And of course, this is Larry Michael, voice of your Washington Redskins. And uh, this today's show is going to be about hard knocks. We'll actually talk about actually talk about the show later. But obviously, was it yesterday? Yes. Hard knocks. Yeah, the hard knocks came swooping in. Yes, hard knocks. Hard times. Hard, well, exactly. We changed the hard times. What do you know at this point about Reuben uh, Foster's injury, Larry? I know what has been reported that he has. Uh, he's out for the year. And, That's for sure. Uh, you know, he's uh, looking at surgery and rehab. They said, I mean, what I've what they what they've released, and what I heard on the radio was, uh, it's ACL, but what it's complicated because they're talking about some kind of arterial damage. Is that I, right? I don't know if that's necessarily true. Okay, I don't believe that's true. Okay. I don't know. I don't know the man's personal records. I, I sometimes it boggles my mind when I see that, and wonder where they got something so personal as that, and so quick, as and so did. quickly, which gives me cause to think that any time you have. Uh, an injury like that, you might have some kind of damage to your arteries or your veins or something. True. I don't know. Not a doctor, and I all I wanted, all I want is for this kid to get well because he put so much time into putting himself in a position uh, to do what he loves, and he has not had it easy. From a uh, small child, he hasn't had it easy. So uh, everybody's got a different background. Everybody's been raised differently, but to see him come in here since the day I met him, when the Redskins acquired him, to the day he got cleared to play. To see a positive attitude from a guy like that who, uh, you know, he's got a lot of confidence, but he's had a lot of hard times, too. So, uh, it was a bummer. It was a bummer. Oh, I can imagine. And, and the field, the place went silent, John. When you looked over there, you saw that someone was down, and then you looked closer, and it was Ruben, and you saw he was in pain. I mean, you could hear a mm -hmm. pin drop, and it seemed like an eternity, because you know how it goes on a football field. They move on to the next drill. And it's next guy up. They got to keep going. You live right. this life. Well, that's true. You know, so you you've seen all. It's a harsh all environment. It is a harsh environment to say the least. Can be. It is. I mean, I'm you know, just like boxing. A guy gets knocked out. If the fight's over, you move on to the next. Drag guy. him off, and the next round or the next bout comes up. So I just hope that you know everything goes well for him, and we're sitting here next year talking about uh, a redemptive season for him. You know, uh, I'm I'm guessing because of the nature of how he went down i'm guessing is where maybe the speculation started because it was kind of a scene right i mean in other words yeah the i think he said he hyper he hyper extended his knee and obviously oh, that's was, originally what there was damage he stepped on tyler catalina's foot right. is what the coach said uh there's a there's a myriad of ways of how you can you know hurt your knee and and you know i guess i, mean, I don't know yeah. if it really matters how it happened only that it happened but I, I don't know about all the other speculation. I think, you know. Yeah, that's what I was trying to refer they'll, to. Uh, they'll have from? the best doctors uh, in the world look at him and take care of him. And I know the team spares no expense on doctors, that's for sure. So just hope he gets well. And, you know, unfortunately, he's done for the year. You know, it's interesting because I didn't really know anything about, or I should say that much about Reuben Foster other than, you know, he came here under some controversy from the, Saint, uh, from the San Francisco 49ers. I think it was. What was he, the late round pick in the first round? But it's he's a first, first round pick. And, he's a first and, round draft pick. Yeah, and the, and the Redskins were had been thinking about drafting him that year. Well, and also, technically, I think that it, when he came out, you could made people were making the argument that he very well was the best linebacker in the country, middle yes. linebacker. Yes. But he had some issues off field type stuff, which which dropped him back in the draft a little bit. Yeah. But but what I didn't know, and I think that really we we need to bring this up, and I think that you know the story, because I was flabbergasted, and I think it was the Sports Illustrated a, a column in that, and I don't know when it was written. It was written a while back, maybe, or maybe it was just I can't remember, but I just read it yesterday. He, he had a, a tragic beginning of his life that I don't think anybody can really comprehend that his father, and I don't know, you know, whether what kind of a rage or whatever he was in, he, he was shot by his father, and his the father shot the mother as well when, he, when uh, Reuben Foster was 18 months old, 18 months old. They both survived. 
the father, in my, is this the same story? I, I forgot this writer. Have you not heard this before? I know that he has had some really, really rough times growing up in the environment he grew up in. Well, I I'm just starting off with that well, is a pretty yeah, horrific I mean, beginning of your life. I, I don't even know if all that is true, but it sounds as though the environment that he was around, that is true. Yeah, and, and then the father, they, they arrested the father eventually. He escaped. They caught him again. Somehow he escaped one more time, or ex whichever time, maybe it was once or twice. He got to California. He was just arrested in 2013. The father's not eligible for parole, not eligible to get out of prison, I think, till 2035 or something like that. It's in that. My point being is the father made contact with Reuben. Reuben forgave him, but that's about it. He says, I forgive you, but, you know, I don't want anything. So this guy's, cool. you know, when you look at it and you don't know that and you just see what, you know, basically what they say about somebody and what some of the controversial things that they've been through, you don't really understand. It's like they say, walk a mile in my shoes. Exactly. And nobody's, nobody's been in his shoes. That makes me feel better and worse. I mean, the, the reason I feel better is this guy's got a spirit that is just... Yeah, you, it, it is. And and to, to get to know the guy, I got to know the guy over the last few months. He's a real good guy. He's always upbeat. You know, you see him come in in the morning. He is just, he's happy to be here. And no reason why, right? Because if you grew up in that situation, exactly. you know, we're kind of blessed to do what we do. So I just hope that everybody support. I know everybody here with the team is going to support him. I and mean, I just hang out. It's always tough seeing a lot of guys get injured. And, in you know, obviously, you know, it's a bummer, Yeah, you know, but you know, hopefully he'll recover 100% and uh, be back bigger, bigger and better than ever. And yeah. the reality of football is it is like, well, what's the depth chart look like? Unfortunately, yeah, exactly. that's, where, that's where the conversation goes. And, but, but these are real important things, I think, to everybody is that his well-being is of paramount importance. Did uh, I'm I'm guessing you would probably know the he probably was projected as a starter. Right? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, exactly. They said that he could just about do. I mean, I, we saw Zach Brown go sideline to sideline. They said, well, he he exceeds that. And he also is a you know good around the line of scrimmage as well. He doesn't just chase down tackles. He can plug a hole. Mm -hmm. Smart guy on the field, every down, never comes off the field. And and you're looking with him and Sean Deion Hamilton as the inside linebackers would have been a couple guys that know each other very well from their Alabama days. So, again, you know, you move on to the next. They're practicing today, yeah. John, and they're going to practice again tomorrow, and nothing stops the train. And this is the third and final, uh, what do you call it, uh, edition of OTAs, right? Now it's team activities. Organized team activities, no hitting, but you can go 11 on 11, and the periods are much the same. And then I think it's the first week of June – they do the mandatory mini camp, but we'll see some of the guys that haven't been here. And after seeing a guy get, I mean, again, I wonder why do you go through all this? I think there's been soul searching. I think the coach said at his press conference, said, wish we could just line up and play the games, but you can't do that. Not really. Because the game will be a debacle if you do that. Nobody will know what they're doing. So it's a, it's a necessary part of camp. What's the, it, you know, you probably have seen some practice injuries uh, that happen with. Yeah, and, and you know we, these you know, are freak type of things where I've seen poor people, and I can't rem I can't I can't name any names off the top of my head. But how many times have you seen a wide receiver, you know, during a practice go down and make a cut? Next thing you know, there's a torn ligament. Yeah, you know, they just make yeah. one. They've been doing it their entire career, and there's nobody around them. And the next thing you know, they got a serious injury. And that to me though is what really kind of is a head scratcher when you look at this because on the one hand, I go back to the old days where you know. Of course, in the off season, you weren't in pads. There was nothing going on in the off season. They did finally, and I think it was Hank Stram, was the guy that eventually started, or maybe George Allen, the mini camps. And so all of a sudden, then people started having mini camps. You could only have one, but other than that, you didn't see anybody till training camp started. But then you were in two a days at Carlisle Penn. At least we were, and you know you were in pads for at least two weeks in the morning <laughs> and the afternoon. There wasn't none of this running around in helmets and no I shoulder pads. I mean, you know, so I kind of look at it and go. I kind of, you know, you, you, there's a part of it, there's part of you that goes, you know, where you kind of go old grizzled vet going, come on, nobody, you know, and then at the same time, with all the weight lifting and everything they do, I don't know what's going on. Everybody's it's just, it's a different opinion. era. Yeah, it is, and you era. can't stop lifting. What's that? You, you can't stop lifting nowadays. Yeah, I mean. You can't stop trying to get stronger or faster. I mean, everybody's stronger or faster. Yeah. And, and, the, and the collisions are, are bigger, and, and, but you guys used to pound each other. Right. Day after day after day with pads. They aren't doing that now. So what's no, better? I don't know. I don't but know. let's let's roll into more hard knocks in a second. Go ahead. 
Helping people improve their lives is what should drive business. That's the belief at Coke Industries, which employs more than 65,000 people across America. The team at Coke works together to meet the world's changing needs in transportation, medical care, water filtration, household goods, energy-efficient building products, and everyday technologies, all while consuming fewer resources. See the innovations firsthand at kochindustries.com. Uh, is your plumbing ship shape? Would it pass the O'Connor plumbing white glove test? A lot of us put crucial decisions off because we know doing the right thing is going to cost us some money. But a head-in-the-sand approach normally costs more money. O'Connor Plumbing gets it. They're going to help you finance any of your plumbing needs, which is going to take a lot of stress out of your day. I've said it before. I'll say it again. If you play with water, you're going to get soaked. Call O'Connor Plumbing at 1-833-RIGGLE44 and ask about their special financing options. Ladies and gentlemen, stand back and watch the Phoenix rise from the ashes. Stand back. It's Riggle the Diesel. Yeah, stand way back. Stand way back. Who wrote that line for you? Did somebody write that or was that your own? I'm I'm embarrassed to say I thought that. You uh, thought that yourself. I hate it when I do that. (laughs) Okay, Hard Knocks. More Hard Knocks. The actual show Hard Knocks. Right. Which I I did a homework on yesterday. I believe it originally debuted in 2001. That, that, That shows what's going on its 18th year. This year will be the 18th year. They say in Vegas, if you're a better or somewhere, that... They're going to be with you this summer, Larry. You're going to have them looking over your shoulder. I sure. I, sure. Huh? I hope not. Have you heard anything? I've what heard do you nothing, know about? but I know that there, there's all kinds of mandates, right? It, and you can get off the hook if you have a first year head coach, right? Or if you get to the playoffs, there's all kinds well, playoff of playoff teams or not. They can say, they, they can say no mas. Uh, but I think we're in the position now that we are one of the few teams. There's about five of them. There's about are, five of them that don't have a new coach. Right. Uh, that haven't been to the playoffs, and you're kind of now, can you even say no at this point? I don't know. I don't know what the process is. I don't know if you really can stamp your foot and say, no, we won't do this. But there is the school of opinion that this would be the perfect year for the Redskins to do this. And why is that? I mean, are you, is that, are you share that opinion? No, because they're going to, they're going to, exactly. they're going to impose on my territory. Okay. Right. And I don't need them around. I don't need them in my stuff. Well, this I is don't for need... you personally. Yes. A hundred percent about me, me, team. me. I'm looking at it from the team standpoint. Why would they want it either? No. Well, I know there's a couple people here that probably don't want it. And if you're the coach of the team, I don't, if you're a coach of a team, do you want them in your meetings? Exactly. No, no, but, but. You have a very interesting situation this year in Richmond, Virginia, which, duh, what's the, what's the most popular position in town? Quarterback. Right. And you have a quarterback situation here this year, which is undeniably a quarterback competition. It's been ta- it was talked about after yeah, practice. Exactly. And you got, all, you got all the missing pieces here. And you got real nice guys. Dwayne Haskins is the nicest guy in the world. He's super smart. He's well-spoken. Got a cannon arm. Uh, very inexperienced. Case Keenum. Got a little Billy Kilmer in him. He's cocky and he's kind of a guy, he, don't, never count him out. Gunslinger kind of guy. He, you know, he will claw your eyeballs out to win the starting job. Plus, super duper nice guy, very respectful, been around the block. And so I think, and then you add Colt McCoy, another super guy right. who should be ready by the time training camp comes around. So that drama in and of itself, to me, if I can divorce myself from my own personal wishes, that I don't want these people right. all over in my booth and, you know, exactly. all over me, then great drama. You three quarterbacks, and then you take them to the preseason games, and who's going to win the job? You got the rookie. You got these two veterans. And then, you know, I, I think it would make for great TV. There's no doubt about that. Would In the big scheme of things, you think, Larry, does it help promote the team? In other words, does it do enough in that direction that the the negative effect of it, which I would think as a former player, I would be going, are you kidding me? What are I, we my, doing my, having these people here? Yeah, I mean, you, I mean, I, they're just a natural, I think. But nowadays, there's a different mindset with the young guys that, that play the game of football today, which they're kind of used to it. They kind of expect it. They want a Twitter. They want a tweet. They want or twi- Twitter, and, and they want to put Facebook. Twitter, Twitter, and Twitter. And what was the other one? Facebook, one, Instagram. Snapchat. Instagram. Snapchat. Insta chat. Instagram. Instagram. Snapchat. Oh. Snapgram. So, so for the you know, so there might be a lot of guys in the locker room that actually would like to see HBO come here, uh, right? No, maybe, maybe today's generation, 
That's, that's what we're all talking over about. That. Chloe, Stevie, Brandon, all of them in the studio here. Exactly. Going, you guys want to see hard something? knocks with the Redskins? Raise the hands. I didn't Brandon, non committal. Stevie? Nope. No. Chloe? Chloe doesn't Chloe care. Been here long Chloe's first to day on the job today. She's not, she has no comment. Todd, you're the wrong generation, Todd. Don't even think about it. <laughs> don't, don't, don't even Todd think can about go it. either way on this. Don't think of, he's going to go with the, the, the popular vote. Todd will be part of the majority. Okay, but, yeah. look, I don't know. Can you really deny them? I mean, how, who's, who decides? Who is it who decides? Who can say no? Roger. Roger That's Goodell decides. That's thinking. Eventually, I mean, if you got... Let's just say they come here and they say we want you guys, and for whatever reason, you know, the team management says, "Nah, let's see, call up who's some, of the, who's the other four? There's like five. Is Cincinnati's Dallas, one of them. Detroit, Detroit. that would uh, Buffalo, I believe. Buffalo, Buffalo. So, no, Buffalo got a new coach a couple years ago, though, right? Right, yeah, but he's not new this year. Three years. Chloe's coming from Buffalo. Oakland. Chloe makes the contribution Oakland, to the show. Oakland's another one. Yeah. Oakland. It's so, Gruden and Gruden. Yeah, that's the ones. Yeah. So my my point is if they came to you and said no, then, you know, like you, what you're saying, then they go to the next guy. I don't know. Or do they just come down? Do they come in and, and the way that whatever it's written, that they mandate and say, no, you're the team and there's no wiggle room here. That's just the way it's going to be. I don't know how it goes, but I just I think there is uh, certainly, uh, and, and to your point earlier, does it promote the team? I mean, locally, you can't avoid the Redskins in the DMV. I mean, Correct. how much more can you hear about but it? You pick up national, fans. national exposure is where you would. And right. the Redskins have a lot of uh, have a big national fan base all over the country. Everywhere Correct. we travel, I mean, the Redskins rallies are just ridiculous. Yeah, and there's packed. not that many. There's a there's a handful of other teams. With, yeah. You know, Pittsburgh, Dallas, or a couple other teams that travel well. But, but I, I do think the uh, situation in Richmond, John. I know you have not gotten down to Richmond yet. Have you been down there to the training? Oh camp? yeah, okay. Hey, I've been there a couple times. It's a great location. It's all brand new, still brand new, great facility, uh, the hotel space, everything. It would be compelling. There's a lot of room there. There's a lot of cool stuff that goes on in Richmond. Mm-hmm. So I think it would. they could tell a very interesting story. And if I could just get them out of my stuff, keep them away from everything we're doing with our own TV stuff, and then, you know, maybe, I don't know. I got no, I, I got no way of knowing. We'll, we'll wait and find out. When are they going to announce that, Todd? You know? So, since nobody's volunteered yet, Washington, along with the Raiders, 49ers, Lions, and the Giants, I thought the Giants be compelled to do it. They're saying part of the uh, delay has been for the NFL's 100-year anniversary and all the extra production and stuff that they're doing. Oh, that's come on. That's, you know, that does, that's nothing. That's a bunch of, you know. You know what makes me wonder when they go ahead, Todd. A lot of people are saying with uh, John Gruden, Antonio Brown, and what's going on with the Raiders, Basically, it looks like it's the Redskins and the Raiders are the uh, two the favorites. The Gruden brothers. <laughs> Why do they do both? Yeah, spy they could do a spy, split Gruden screen. School. They could do both. They could do both. Um, I was thinking to myself that you know if this actually does happen, that I'm th- guessing the real people besides you know anybody I'm thinking that's not necessarily on the team because I'm thinking nowadays I'm thinking actually myself personally I would I wouldn't have wanted to have HBO around I just wouldn't have been cool for me but i'm thinking modern players you know contemporary players i think they'd like it i think the coaches are the one be just like you you know having somebody in your meeting room and you're doing all this stuff or when you're getting ready to you know i think in one of the part of the things they do is when they cut guys you know yeah one of the big scenes where they that's do the that. worst i mean that, uh, exactly because yeah. we were talking about you know years ago when it was a usfl when john hadel cut somebody i mean this guy they yeah. had to get cops involved he got in pissed it. huh well, I think he was showing up with a revolver or something. I mean, this guy was out for blood, literally. He didn't. He thought he could. He thought he should be on the team. I'm cut. No, you're cut. John, you know, I see on our agenda, uh huh, high school prom. Yes. Is, you got to be kidding. No. All right, we're gonna talk it's about that, that. It's that time of year, Larry. We're gonna talk about that in a second. The Times the Money Scratcher from the Virginia Lottery offers excitement multiplied at price points from one dollar to thirty dollars. Now follow this, Todd. From two times the money and its top prize of four thousand to one hundred times the money and the top prize of seven million. You got that? Got it. These games offer you the chance to win big. The games also feature multipliers, which means the chance to multiply your winnings. Take a second to consider what multiplying the good things in life would mean. More prom appearances for John. Now Always. think about money multiplied. Multiply the good things today by asking the times by asking about the times the money scratcher at your lottery retailer. Have you heard about Creighton Farms, the private club community that's home to the Redskins? Creighton Farms is just 20 minutes from Dulles, but a world away. 
on top of its award-winning Jack Nicholas signature golf course, pools, tennis courts, and other resort-style amenities, you'll find custom homes and villas that are simply extraordinary, starting at $1.5 million. For property and legal information, visit CreightonFarms.com. Or, better yet, visit Creighton Farms. If you have atrial fibrillation, you know it can be difficult to treat successfully. And Nova Heart and Vascular Institute in Fairfax is a leader in AFib treatment using specialized technology and expertise. This helps to more precisely target and treat rhythm irregularities that others could miss, helping to restore your heartbeat to normal. Give your heart the benefit of care. Visit anovaheart.org slash AFib to learn more and to find an Anova physician. Innova, join the future of health. Gearing up for game day? Your local Safeway has everything you need for the perfect tailgating or home gating party. Pick up all your favorites like wings, chips and dips, brats, burgers, beverages, and pizza. Stop by the deli to pick up fresh fried chicken or the produce department for a variety of party trays. Head on over to your local Safeway and pick up everyone's favorites. Safeway, the official supermarket of the Washington Redskins. John, when he walked, he had a little bop to him. And besides that, he had the booty out there. They nicknamed him Chocolate Chip. Story time with Rigo. Yes, it's prom time, Larry. Spring yeah. is in the air. So tell me about it. Well, my senior prom was a pretty much an uneventful uh, evening. W- myself and a good friend of mine, Dan Bloom, his nickname was Pig, uh, and we decided that... You went with Pig to the prom? I went with Pig to the prom. Yeah, but there's a little bit more to it than that. Actually, you know, by then we were calling him Gip. Because that's Pig spelled backwards. For, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Very clever. Because after a while, we went to Marysville one night, and there was a friend of mine over there that I played baseball with. And he had his, you know, hot high school girlfriend with him. And he, we pull up, and the guy, he goes, Hey, Pig, is that you? Oh, and he geez. said, he called Dan Pig Five to, I mean, Dan was ready to get out of the car and go over there and mop the floor up with this guy. Exactly. I'm going to show you what a pig. Why did really he put his like. foot down when they started calling a pig? I don't. Why would you let anybody get away with that and let that he stick? Said, pig. Not that, I, could, I, could, I could beat pig up, so there wasn't nothing he could do about it. Pig. So pig. then everybody else thought, "What's he going to do?" Gonna, but I did change it. I, I don't. You know, I went. Okay, I had a little compassion. We'll call him Gip, and Gip's kind of cute, actually. So anyway, Gip and I, we uh, we found at the last second, a couple of, and we were seniors, you know, a couple of senior girls. I think I took Janice Alexander, and I and I can't remember, but because we went over to Kelma Watts's house and picked them up, and I think I think Dan took Kelma, but I can't remember for sure. But all I know is this. This is the part you got to remember. So I've got my suit on. I mean, I'm in Centralia, Kansas. It's what the late '60s. There's no. What are we gonna get a tuxedo out there from Seneca? That's not happening. There was no limos. We just like I think I think Dan had his '58 Chevy Bel Air with overdrive, which you know was a 327. I think it was a 320. No, 348. He had a 348 in. Well, wait a second, <laughs> Todd. You're getting way ahead of me because this was last. This He's was got the a last piece minute. of tumbleweed. He had a, he yeah. a little piece of tumbleweed on their dress. <laughs> this was this was a last minute arrangement, you know, like, hey, you got it? You ain't got it. Oh, well, come on, let's go together. Anyway, so we go over to pick, you know, go knock on the door. I step out of the car. I walk in, and there's a tree there, which isn't there anymore. What do you think happens? Some bird poops right on my shoulder as I'm going up. That white, cra- I mean, it was like I was marred from the beginning. Was it a black tuxedo? No, I was in my, my, you know, a suit that I, that, you know, no, was my suit. Suits and, suits and I'm going to beat this story in a second. I got something that So anyway, out. we go to the, we go to the prom. I don't even remember what happened. I mean, I don't even remember the, you know, there always is a theme to the prom. I don't yeah. know what it was. It was yeah. probably maybe South Pacific. I can't even remember. The prom's over with. We say goodbye to the girls. And, and Dan and I, he goes home and he gets his fishing gear and I get my fishing gear. And we go out and we fish all night in some pond. Didn't get one bite. We're out there. I mean, I don't even know what we were thinking. But, you know, we were seniors in high school. So we come home that morning about 5 or 6 o'clock in the morning. And we're driving home. And we see 
where there's this skid mark that it starts on the coming this down that right when you go into town right by Otto Polson's Phillips 66 station at the Dead edge Man's of town curve. huh Dead Man's curve <laughs> it's basically and it was it was coming down and and you can see where the car there's skid marks and then it goes off and you know the, the barbed wire fence is all torn out and all this stuff and all you know this is like six o'clock in the morning and then we see this Dodge Dart down at the bottom this black Mike Dar, Mike the Pup Dar. He come and he was a you know he was a terror on you know putting him behind the wheel. He drove that car like a maniac. I guess he got all fired up, came down the hill, dead man's curve. He walked away from everything. Everything was fine, but that that was my you know that was the big the big hoorah on my prom night. Jeez. So what do you got? I uh, I took Sharon Decklebaum to the prom at Northwood High School. We we had this thing going with this that group. name should have scared you. Right we there. had this we had this thing going with this uh, group of cheerleaders. Which the cheerleaders we used to hang around with the cheerleaders. You know, it was our kind of our. By the flip. way, the girls we asked they were the B team for sure. They, <laughs> we had to, they were not on the A team. We had the A team. Right we had the A team. Okay. So well, back you, then, you know, I had the luxury of having a vehicle, and so I went with Sharon Decklebaum and a guy named Bernie. I won't say his last name and his date, and we kind of went in the same car. So we went to pregame a little bit, you know. We did our little pregame thing that we did. Then we went to the prom itself. And Bernie said, I'll be right in. I want to finish this beer. And so I went in with my date and his date. And the three of us go in to the prom. We come out of the prom afterwards. We get in my car. And something smells kind of funky in my car. So what is that smell? And Bernie sheepishly says, uh, I had a little accident in your car. And I said, what's the accident? He puked in my glove box. He literally puked in my glove box. And I look in my glove box, and there's puke in my glove box. And I'm wondering, you are a sick man. Couldn't you have opened the door right, right. or the window or something? He goes, I didn't have time to. And, and I didn't, you know, I said, oh, my God. So that was, you know, again, last time I ever had that guy in my car. So that ruined the night. You got a nice date. Uh. You got a nice date going, and you end up at a car that somebody puked in your glove box. And that was the end of the night. It game over. I was going to say, if you had game any amorous, it later on amorous intentions, no. I think that that or was hard definitely knocks. That, <laughs> was a, hard knocks. that was a mood killer right there. Talk about a mood killer. Yeah. That smell is not a good sense if it's bad. Bad oh. smell. There's nothing worse than a bad smell to kill any kind of amorous mood that yeah. you might have. That's true. You know what I'm saying? It comes in all shapes and sizes, too. It's just Make bad. No mistake about that. It's just bad. A bad smell that, you know, maybe it's leftover food. Or maybe it's somebody puked in your glove box or some other kind of bad smell. There's a lot of them. You know? They're out there. But That's... there's nothing like, you know, if you ever know, I'll tell one quick story here about smell and how it has such a strong uh, uh, grip on our memories that years ago, this would have been in the early 90s, late 80s, I'm driving down Route 7 towards Leesburg. I had a, pl a piece of property out there. And this kind of off, kind of jumping the tracks here a little bit, as I like to do. I don't already admitted to that. <laughs> and so it's noon, and there's a station here, the country station. Was it WMZQ? It's WMZQ. They, okay. I think they still yeah. do. They play yeah. the Star Spangled Banner at yeah. noon. So it's a, it's like it is today. It was either in May, June. It was a nice warm day. I'm riding. I got the truck windows rolled down. At the, you know, I'm heading for my property out there, and I'm driving down the road. And it just so happens that the the crew, the road crew, is out there. I should say the maintenance crew, and they're mowing the median on route seven you know on you know and so there's all this fresh cut grass i'm riding down the road and all of a sudden i'm driving i'm smelling this fresh cut grass and the 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 star the national anthem comes on and all of a sudden larry the hair starts standing up on the back of my neck i start getting goosebumps and i could never piece it together and it finally it dawned on me at one o'clock every sunday they played the national anthem and I was usually on a fresh cut grass field. And it was literally a Pavlovian response to having stood there getting ready to get whacked and getting on going through. In fact, I'm getting goosebumps now talking about it. Is that it's like it, it's ingrained in you. And I never knew it. And it dawned on me that's what it was. So you talk about smell. There are good smells fresh wow. cut grass, fresh cut alfalfa, nothing like it. Fresh cut wheat, another good thing. Smells from the country. I, the, you know what? You're giving me some chills too about your football Sundays. But then I've never. I don't know what alfalfa. What does alfalfa smell like? Is that a good smell? It is particularly after you, like, you go. You drive past. You is it a grass smell or is yeah. it a? Uh, well, it's, well, that's what you feed cattle, and uh, it's a legume. It's a nitrogen fixing uh, plant. Uh, but I remember years ago, a legume. Yeah, it is. It's a legume. It's a legume. It's in it's a legume a, family. I don't want to. You know what a legume, legume is? It doesn't, it doesn't produce. It's, it's not a pea a or a bean. A okay, but another test to our millennials. I take that back. It might not be a legume. Who knows what a legume is? It's a bean. 
It's a bean. A legume it's is a bean. A bean. bean. The bean family. Might not be None a, of you know that. It might not be a legume the more I think about Fred, it. But it is nitrogen that? fixing. Come on. So, well, it's okay. we will leave you with that little nugget of knowledge, and we'll see you next week for episode 40. Right, Larry? What's that smell? <laughs>